Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a houseplant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. Today, we embark on a magical journey to Disneyland and DisneySea Tokyo. The parks boast a botanical collection that is not only diverse, but downright spectacular. Each themed area is a canvas for creative plant choices and landscaping that Disney has mastered to perfection. They've spared no expense crafting landscaping masterpieces that are not only professional, but also highly immersive, wildly creative, and occasionally whimsical. We come across fantastic foliage and flora from every nook and cranny of the globe. I've included plant IDs along with places of origins, turning this trip into a botanical adventure brimming with fun facts and casual learning. After a short and comfortable tram ride, Disneyland revealed itself to us. There's nothing more exciting than walking towards the entrance of the park. Now I'm no stranger to Disneyland's because I used to live in Orlando, Florida where I held an annual pass. So I have been to the parks maybe 50 times in my lifetime. On the day of this filming, it was also my birthday. So this was my third Disney birthday. And I've been to all of the parks except to the, the Paris one, if I'm not wrong. And on this fateful day, I turned 40 years old. I guess as an adult, I still feel the excitement and joy and the magic of Disney. That's my older brother and my five-year-old nephew. Also my dad, my sister and my mom came along in this trip. So it's a family vacation and it is his first time here. So he's rather excited. On the main street, we were greeted by these floating bouquets of plants that are flowering. Upon closer inspection, I realized that they were actually moss balls. So they are in fact kokodamas. This is uniquely Japanese. Basically all the plants were mounted on a moss ball and grown into it, rooted into it. Look at how beautiful this is. This is dazzling the way that the composition is and also the use of colors. And then the type of plants used are also quite fascinating. These are bromeliads but you can also see if you slow down the screen a bit a lot of spider plants some crotons aglonemas dracaenas and so on and so forth i'm curious to know how they actually care for this plant i'm guessing they basically either dunk them in water or they just hose it down and if you look here in the bottom view there's some calatheas down below and keep in mind calatheas actually love low light so this is actually an arrangement that they're probably very happy with and these bromeliads are perfectly synchronized in their blooms which is going to suggest that this is probably triggered by some chemicals but i really respect this kind of determination here you see a magnificent tree providing much needed shade to park guests there's some epiphytic plants on the trees and this green on green foliage below is also quite stunning Now this visit happened in June or in summertime, but Japan actually shares the same type of weather with most of the US and Europe. They enjoy four very distinct seasons. The Schifflera is actually a versatile plant that do well both indoors and outdoors and they can take a wide range of lighting conditions. A Calathea or Jopertia Makoyana doing really well. This is another low light loving plant and it used to be called the Calathea lancifolia, but the updated name is on the screen. Will you look at this beautiful arrangement of cheerful plants just greeting passerbys? And this is an Anthurium andrianum hybrid and it is actually pregnant. Somehow it got pollinated, so this is quite a naughty one. Not only do these plants make passerbys happy, they are in fact happy plants. Look at this amazing bright indirect light that they are getting. We made a left from the main street towards Pirates of the Caribbean and look at this amazing landscape. This is so beautiful, the color composition and then there's so many textures. It is just so pleasing to the eye. And this, I believe this is a Bauhinia, it, uh, the one that looks like a butt, but correct me if I'm wrong. And ladies and gentlemen, I wanna bring your eyes to this spectacular plant, Tropelium mahus from the Andes Mountains. These vibrant flowers are actually edible and has a peppery or zesty flavor. Their round and veiny leaves look indistinguishable from Stefano erecta's leaves. And behind it is a plant that makes me smile every time I see it. It's the Impatience from New Guinea, or sometimes just called the New Guinea Impatience. 
This is the common rubber tree, but it's given a bonsai treatment. Look at how beautifully it's branching out from all over the place by cleverly cutting off the tops. We've toured some plant stores in Tokyo, so we know that it's common for them to apply this practice to a lot of the indoor trees. This is such a beautiful bromeliad, providing a much needed shade of color on the tree. And this landscaping is just magnificent. There's actually a Magnificum medinilla that is hiding down below. More cheerful anthurium flowers, and I know you shouldn't call them flowers, they're actually spadex, but I just can't help myself. There are some monsteras, crotons, and look at this handsome hibiscus flower. Everything here is in full bloom, including this beautiful bromeliad. More New Guinea impatience, and I want to show you guys this beautiful ficus. It's got orange and red new growth, and what a nice contrast of colors here. Alright, my family's way ahead of me and I've got to join them. We're going on the Pirates of the Caribbean first. Upon exiting the ride, we came across this beautiful landscape of plants in beautiful pots. Look at how masterfully this is landscaped. And over here we've got the Persian shield, although it originated from Myanmar. I don't know who named it Persian shield. And this beautiful colorful foliage plant. And I want to bring your eyes to this beautiful flower from Africa. Now a lot of these plants, I got their plant ID from Google image search, just so you know. So if I got something wrong, please forgive me. Down below, we've got some coral bells. This is apparently very common in the US and it originates from North America. If you look carefully, there's a Raphidophora tetrasperma snuck under there. More coral bells here and they've got such a beautiful fall autumn color to it. And apparently this is what their flowers look like. And this is a common Tradescantia and it's actually got a lot of interesting medicinal benefits to it that you should look up in your own time. And of course, a gorgeous Triflera hiding in the back. The Magnolia grandiflora is native to the southeastern USA. Their leaves have a distinctive coppery underside and they produce beautiful white flowers. Fossilized remains of these flowers date back over 20 million years. And here we have more hanging cocodamas. The composition, the color, and the choice of plants used were so fantastic. Here's another beautiful live plant arrangement. I see crotons, anthuriums, ferns, impatiens. And these caterpillar-like flowers are the Acalypha pendula. We often see them in landscaping. And of course, my favorite plant, the Aphelandra squarosa, or also known as the zebra plant. And hiding below is a beautiful variegated fern. They have playfully placed a pineapple plant here because this is right in front of a drink stand that serves pineapple. These small fantastic gardens are all over the park and they provide a nice splash of color, but they also complement the theme, which in this case is the Lilo and Stitch from Hawaii. This is a cordial line. Look at how beautiful the markings are on the leaves. And behind you see an almost invasive plant, the Heterohelix or the English Ivy. giant cactus and palms, they really complete the look of this themed area. Can you imagine what this place would look like without these plants? Overall, it was a beautiful day with perfect weather and we had to queue for about an hour for each ride, but it was quite manageable and what you would expect in a Disneyland. We blew a candle for my birthday at the Alice in Wonderland and here, this is It's a Small World and there's so many beautiful, cheerful landscaping right in front of it. This beautiful flowering plant is commonly known as Lily of the Nile. The Nile is in North Africa, but this plant in fact originates from South Africa. And the petunia here is from South America and has been extensively bred and hybridized for its showy flowers that last a long time. 
The next day, we moved on to the second theme park, the Disney Sea. And for those of you who don't know, Disneyland in Tokyo comprises of two theme parks that are completely separate. The Disney Sea has a sea theme to it, and it's actually one that most people favor. I am inching slowly towards this massive, massive pot of Cordyline fruticosa. This is a common plant used often in landscaping, but I've never seen a basket like this. This is such a beautiful display. There are probably hundreds of these lively flower arrangements throughout the park. These echinaceas are actually modern cultivars, but the genus itself originate from the United States. Look at these gorgeous flowers. If I was a bee or a butterfly, I would probably frolic on them all day long. This plant is also thought to contain powerful medicinal properties. We've arrived at the enchanting Arabian themed area. The plant life selected for this zone create an immersive experience for park guests. They truly are a vital part of theme park experience. Along the walkways are these cordoned off areas that are little gardens. They are filled with an array of interesting plants, such as this Kalanchoe that you see in front of you. It's got an interesting silver blue sheen and very fuzzy leaves. And then next to it is the very common Euphorbia tirocale. This is also known as the pencil stick cactus. Now, I didn't get the memo, but I guess your flowers have been reclassified to the Heptaplerum genus. And this is one that is very interesting. We saw this in some of the Singapore collectors tour. Behold, the breathtaking display of hydrangeas in this stunning flower bed. This genus finds its origins in East Asia, but hydrangea macrophylla is endemic to Japan and has been bred into the countless cultivars we enjoy today. In Japanese culture, hydrangeas are rich in symbolism, such as gratitude, heartfelt emotions, and apology. One fascinating aspect of hydrangeas is the ability for some species to change flower color based on soil pH. For example, in acidic soils, they may take on shades of blue, while alkaline soils may result in pink or purple hues. This color changing ability adds to their allure in the gardens. Their beauty have you all spellbound, causing you to involuntarily click like on this video. Hitting the like button is the best way for viewers to help creators grow their channel. And for that, I am most grateful. This dazzling display of hydrangeas are perfectly befitting for the Finding Nemo Junior Coaster ride. Right outside the Little Mermaid area is this whimsical silk tree. It originates from Iran, China, and Japan. If you look closely at the branches, they have been unnaturally bent against their will to create a playful look. Japanese people are masters when it comes to taming tree shapes. And look at these beautiful blooms. My gosh. This is a beautiful Aeonium, also sometimes known as Black Rose. It likes partial shade to full sun and is cared for the same way you would with succulents. And look at this array of interesting textures and layers of plants behind it. This unique and dramatic arrangement of plants complement the colorful underwater theme of The Little Mermaid. Look at this beautiful Dracaena marginata tricolor that's been pruned so hard that it is branching out like a candle holder. Now I see these leaves everywhere around the park, but apparently they do bloom beautifully. The Calistegia heteracea and it originates from Japan. More beds of cheerful blooms. These guys are everywhere around the park and they really, really make a huge difference. On the other side of the park, I came across this very peculiar landscaping. It looks very otherworldly and it's just so unforgettable. And this plant here, it's got beautiful leaves, but 
if you look at the flowers, this is actually the Acanthus mollis, or I think it's called the bear paw something. But look at how stunning those flowers are. We actually got chased out after filming this clip because I kind of stepped into like a cordon off area, but just by a few feet. I felt really bad that the lady had to chase me away. In Japan, you really have to be mindful and respectful for the rules and regulations. Here's another bed of Schaeflera or Haptoplerum as they're called now. These guys actually like full sun and they are from Taiwan and Hainan region of China. They are rather beautiful, fast growing and they're so fun to propagate and they're umbrella shaped baby leaves. Look at that. They're actually very, very fun to grow and it really is a plant that can help you grow confidence as a plant parent. Towering above us is this beautiful olive tree. They can actually become really big and they can be rather expensive for some reason. And a lot of people actually try to grow them in the tropics, but they actually do like that Mediterranean climate. So we don't do so well with olive trees here in Indonesia where I live. This is the variegated variety of that Haptoplerum. And look at how stunning the variegation is. And Correct me if I'm wrong, but usually the variegation is on the outside and this one, the variegation is actually on the inside. I think I'm about to run out and get me one of these because this is actually quite stunning. Hailing from Australia, this next plant is commonly known as Bushy Bottle Brush. It's named so because it literally looks like brush for cleaning bottles. This species is known for its tolerance to drought conditions once it's established, and is well suited to arid and semi-arid climates. It is no surprise that this plant is commonly known as pineapple lily, as its fragrant flowers resemble pineapples. It blooms in early fall, adding a burst of color to gardens when many other plants are winding down for the season. You can't do desert scape without adding some agaves. This is so dramatic. It's got bluish silver sheen to it and it's mean teeth along the leaves. We saw this same plant yesterday outside It's a Small World in Disneyland. It's so, so beautiful. And I like that some of these buds are not open yet. They look like water droplets just floating in the air. And this is Jasmine's carpet ride, if I'm not wrong. This is so befitting for the theme and look at just how stunning this is. If I was a bee, I would just love to buzz around these flowers. Alocasia amazonica, nice to see you here. I just found out that this is actually a hybrid. And then this is the blue star fern from the United States. And this is actually a pretty common fern and apparently very easy to grow. And this is some sort of Dioscoria, correct me if I'm wrong, but I really adore the leaves. The composition here is perfect. Everything is placed effortlessly, beautiful shapes and colors. Let's look at some of these plants up close. This is a beautiful bed of lantanas, tiny, tiny, but cheerful flowers. And when I looked at the species ID, it's got this registered trademark on it. So maybe it's a highly protected plant. The Grevillea Robin Gordon is a fascinating cultivar that is native to Australia. This plant can withstand periods of drought and it's a valuable source of nectar-rich flowers that attract birds. This Chrysandra is native to India, where its flowers are sometimes used in religious offerings and rituals. It's known to bloom even when grown in shade. We had some delicious Japanese style curry for lunch and then proceeded to take on some rides. Now, the interesting thing about being in Disneyland Tokyo is that people dress up and sometimes they can be quite funny and amusing. If you have little ones with you, it is recommended to spend a few hours in Ariel's Grotto. There are tons of little kids rides, and actually the area is themed really beautifully. 
On our way out of the park, we saw these interesting trees. I also believe that they must be bent unnaturally against their will to look like an umbrella like this. This is actually really, really amusing and whimsical to me. Now, these trees do sport a type of bark that I am quite familiar with. I used to see them a lot when I was living in Shanghai, China. Feel free to comment down below if you happen to know the species ID for this tree. I guess this brings our episode to a close. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and stay subscribed. I do have some Japanese travel vlogs in my personal channel, Only Sean, that I will link in the description down below. Thank you, Patreon members, for supporting the channel. Should you consider joining as a member, the Patreon link is Sean from Only Plants. It can also be found in this video description. I've started producing bonus contents for members. These include plant hauls, plant shopping, and mini bite sized adventures. The same bonus contents will also be unlocked for you if you join to become a YouTube member of the channel. There is a monthly membership fee as small as a cup of coffee a month. Simply go to Only Plants channel page and click join. Your contributions help me grow the channel, do better content, and have a better quality of life. For that, I thank you from the bottom of my heart.